Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Caldo Verde. That's right, we're making green soup. But not just any green soup. This recipe, which is from northern Portugal, is considered by experts one of the world's most delicious soups. And what kind of experts? Soup experts. And I'm very excited to show you my own personal favorite version, which we will start by slicing up some Portuguese sausage, also known as linguiça. And I don't generally have much trouble finding this in the bigger supermarkets. But if you do, any kind of cured, lightly smoked, spicy garlic sausage would work. Or right, something like an andouille. Or I've even used a dry version of chorizo for this, which is very nice. And what we'll do is slice that up as shown. Although we should probably do both at once. Thereby cutting our production time in half. And if you want, you can dice this instead. Which I've seen done in other versions. But that's going to take you a little longer. And I kind of like the looks of the rounds. So we'll go ahead and slice that up. At which point we will head to the stove, where we have our soup pot set over medium-high heat. And then to that we will add a little bit of olive oil, as well as our linguiça. And then all we're going to do is sauté that sausage for about 3 minutes or so, just until those edges start to take on a little bit of color. And we've extracted a couple tablespoons of that amazingly flavorful linguiça fat. And once it gets to this stage, which again is only going to take a couple minutes, We'll go ahead and remove that with a strainer or slotted spoon to a bowl and simply reserve that until needed. And then once that's set, we'll reduce our heat to medium low and toss our diced onions right back into the pot, along with a traditional big pinch of salt. And we'll cook those on medium low, stirring occasionally until they soften up and sort of turn translucent. And out of all the different delicious things you can cook onions in, rendered linguiça fat is right up there with my favorites. And while we're waiting for those to soften up, we might as well go ahead and slice our potatoes. Which for me is going to be about 3 pounds of russet potatoes. Which I think provide the perfect texture for this. And one tip when you slice potatoes, always cut a piece off the bottom first. That way it's going to lay nice and flat. And you will significantly lower your chance of cutting yourself. So we'll go ahead and peel and slice about 5 or 6 potatoes depending on size. And by the way, anywhere between like an eighth and a quarter inch is fine. Since we're going to smash these up anyway. But we do want them fairly consistent so they cook at the same rate. And once those are done, we can toss them into some cold water until we need them. And yes, we are going to drain those first. But for now, we can just leave them like this. And then once that's been accomplished, all we need to do is wait for our onions to soften and sweeten. Which it looks and feels like mine have. And once our onions are done, we will transfer our drained potatoes into the pot. And if you watch carefully, you'll see one slice falls on the floor. Which some people think is okay to pick up and put back in because of the 5 second rule. Well, I have a different 5 second rule. It's called take 5 seconds and wash it off and then put it back in. Which is what I did. Along with a couple teaspoons of salt. And a couple quarts of liquid. Which traditionally is water. But if you can swing it, I prefer a couple quarts of chicken broth. Which of course will just add a little more flavor. And then what we'll do is raise our heat to high so we can bring this up to a simmer. Oh, and I should mention because of the seasoning in the sausage, we do not need to add cayenne here. But I'm going to anyway, since need to and want to are totally different things. But anyway, we will bring that up to a simmer on high, at which point we'll reduce it down to medium low, and cook this until our potatoes are completely tender. And I'm not sure exactly how long that's going to take, because I'm not sure how thick you sliced them, but you'll know because you're going to check them. And then what we'll do while we're waiting for that to happen, is prep the verde for this caldo. And for me that's going to be a couple pounds of kale. And I'm using a particularly beautiful variety called Dino Kale, also known as Lachinato Kale. And while we can slice this up just like this, I much prefer to pull out that tough fibrous rib that runs down the center of the leaf. Which is very easy to do. By simply pulling through your fingers, that leaf will separate off that nicely. And any pieces that don't you can just pull off. And sure this is going to add a little bit of prep time to the recipe, but I think it's totally worth it. Plus, you can always try to get a couple of your friends to maybe come over for a little pre-dinner stripping. Although, when you text to ask, I would probably phrase that differently. But anyway, once our kale has been ribbed, we will proceed to give it a chop, which I like to do one handful at a time, to sort of wad that up and slice across with a knife like this. And then we'll turn that and go the other way to get some bite-sized pieces. Right, ideally, once this is wilted in the soup, these pieces will be roughly the size of your spoon. And by the way, while kale is a great choice for this, any other dark leafy greens would work. Or things like collard greens or Swiss chard would also work great. 
So if you happen to find some other great looking greens at the market, go ahead and use them. But anyway, what we'll do once our greens are chopped is go ahead and give them a wash in some nice cold fresh water. And then we'll go ahead and transfer those into a colander to drain. And as I'm transferring those in, I'm kind of smashing them with my hands. So they take up less room and they're gonna be easier to put in the soup. Speaking of which, once that's set, let's head over to see how our potatoes are doing. And we will test those for tenderness. And as you can see, those are falling apart and we can easily smash that against the side of the pot with our spatula. And what we'll do once those are tender is take a potato masher and smash these as fine as we want. Okay, some people like to leave a lot of big chunks. Other people like me like to smash it pretty much smooth. Okay, so you're gonna have to decide how far to go. I mean, you are after all the wall dough of this call dough. So you do that to the point you find gives you the best texture. But the more you smash, the smoother and silkier it gets, which is my preference. And then once that's set, it's time to stir in our kale, which we need to do a couple handfuls at a time. All right, this is gonna seem like sort of a magic trick because by the looks of it, it will never seem like it's gonna fit, but it does. Because as you add and stir in a couple handfuls, it's gonna wilt and it will make room for the next addition and you'll see, eventually it will all fit. In worst case scenario, it doesn't and you're left over with a small handful. Just save it and make a frittata the next day. I know that does sound good. See, now you're hoping it doesn't fit. But anyway, we will go ahead and stir in our kale. At which point we can grab our bowl of sausage and go ahead and add that back in. Which we did not cook with our potatoes because I didn't want those to get broken up into little bits when we worked this over with the masher. So to preserve, as we'd say in the business, the integrity of the sausage, we will stir that in at this point. And then what we're gonna do to finish this soup off is simply let it simmer on medium low until our greens get nice and tender. Or at least that's my preference. Okay, if you prefer to enjoy this with those greens having a little more texture to them, that is your business. And since there is such a thing as a kale salad where the greens are not cooked at all, who am I to say that's a mistake? But in my occasionally humble opinion, I think this soup is at its best when it's simmered for about 45 minutes and those greens have gotten very, very tender. And not only do I taste this for tenderness or green, it's also usually almost always gonna need some salt. All right, really the only way to ruin this recipe is to undersalt it. And even though that sausage is usually highly seasoned and we did add some salt earlier, you need to check it. But anyway, I went ahead and let mine simmer for a total of about 45 minutes or so until it looked a little something like this. And after giving it one last official test for green tenderness, as well as double checking for seasoning, I determined it was ready to serve, which I did into this bowl. And then I garnished the top with a few drops of olive oil to add a little bit of richness, but also a nice little sparkle to the surface. And that's it. My version of caldo verde is done and ready to serve next to a slice of toasted bread. And sure, it's beautiful and simple to make and super nutritious and very inexpensive. But above and beyond all those things, this is one of the most comforting, most satisfying soups ever invented. All right, there's probably an old Portuguese saying that nobody ever makes caldo verde once. Because once you make this, it's pretty much a guarantee it's gonna go into the regular rotation. It is just one of those dishes. And by the way, if you're having feelings of deja vu, yes, I did do this recipe like 10 years ago, but I didn't call it caldo verde. And I also tagged it as a Spanish recipe which my Portuguese viewers let me know was definitely no bueno. So hopefully the second attempt redeems me with them a little bit. We'll see. And then before I sign off, I did want to show you one thing I like to do while eating this soup. I like to build myself some impromptu braised green bruschettas. Sorry, no sausage. I just like to pile up those hot, wet, savory greens and eat it off the toast, which is never not thoroughly enjoyable. So just a little something I like to do. I'm guessing my average viewer does not need eating instructions. But anyway, that's it, caldo verde. My only regret is that the weather was pretty nice when I ate this. I really wanted it to be nasty and cold and damp. But hey, you can't have everything. And no matter what the weather is, I really do hope you give this amazing soup a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.